in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Good evening, Yorktown, and welcome to the town board meeting for January 19th, 2021. I ask that you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States, United States of, America. of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I always try to stay in sync with everybody when I'm doing the pledge. I like hearing all the different. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> versions. Just put, you, put you one behind. <laughs> If you could all join me in a moment of silence as we remember the lives of the 400,000 Americans lost due to COVID-19. As we say a special prayer for a peaceful transition of power tomorrow for our nation to begin healing. And of course, for our frontliners, our first responders, our police, the bravest men and women serving in uniform, both here and abroad, protecting our freedoms every single day. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good. Good evening. Supervisor Matt Slater. Happy to welcome everyone to this town board meeting. I'm joined by Councilman Vishnu Patel, Councilman Tom Diana, Councilwoman Alice Roker, Councilman Ed Lachterman. We're joined by our town clerk, Diana Quast. We have with us as well our highway superintendent, Dave Paganelli. Looks like you changed your picture there, Dave. I and did. <laughs> and we have <laughs> and we have our town attorney Adam Rodriguez with us as as well. We'll start with a report to the town. Uh, we'll begin, of course, with COVID. I'm going to share my screen and and show the updated numbers uh, that we have here in the town of Yorktown and elsewhere. And we're going to start. I always like to start from the beginning, so everyone knows. If you go to Yorktown NY. Dot org. That's the town's website. A lot of information here, not just about COVID, but uh, about a lot of things going on across town. The Yorktown coronavirus updates, the link right to our community impact dashboard is always right there, right on the homepage. You click on it and it'll bring you to our interactive map. There it goes. So we have got some pretty decent news to share, which is the number of cases has uh, started to drop, uh, which, which again uh, was expected after the holiday, holiday spikes. Um, as of yesterday from the health department, we have 23 new cases. Uh, active cases uh, for the entire community is now at 461. Well, I don't know why it's doing that. 461. Uh, and if you see here, I don't know why my computer screen's acting all weird. But if you see here, again, you can click on by zip code. We do provide a zip code breakdown. Uh, so 10598, uh, 16 new cases. Uh, up in Jefferson Valley, 10535, one new case. To our friends in Shrub Oak, no new cases, uh, which, is, which is great to see. We're very uh, healthy in the north. I see that, but still 34 active cases. Uh, <laughs> again, uh, over to our, our friends in, in Mohegan, two new cases with 79 active. And you can go through the entire town at your leisure uh, to see the number of active cases by zip code, number of new cases. And it also, of course, includes our neighbors in the south. Um, uh, and again, the total being 461. I do want to point out uh, over to the right side of the screen, um, over on the, yep, right over there. You, a lot of information here as well, including uh, one of the more recent trackers, which is the COVID-19 tracker for New York State, which you can see here. Uh, this is, of course, the number one topic of conversation. And as I pointed out uh, to uh, the board members here for the Mid-Hudson region, which is our region, according to the state of New York, total doses received is 111,000 and total administered is 83,000. Now, that may seem like a lot, but there are a million people in Westchester County alone and the Mid-Hudson region includes Westchester, Putnam, Dutchess. It also includes Rockland, Orange, 
uh, as well. And I believe Sullivan's included. Um, and so that for, for all those regions, for all those counties to be uh, included, and at this point, 83,917 doses administered according to the state of New York. On Friday, we had with us doing that. On Friday, we had with us uh, Dr. Lewis Cole from Caremount. He is the, uh, he is the uh, medical director and chief safety officer. He provided just such great information about the vaccine for the community. Everyone, I just want to make sure, knows that on our homepage, this YGTV link, if you click on this link, you can see just about everything uh, that we put up in, uh, in regards to our, our, our updates right here on the corona virus updates our town board videos planning board videos zoning board videos you name it you can find it right here uh, but i encourage everyone again to check out the video on january 15th with dr cole uh, to learn about where we stand with the vaccination uh, happy to report thanks to dr cole the caramount uh, will be opening a clinic a vaccine clinic here in the town of yorktown uh, but again it's all predicated off of the supply of the vaccine. And so while they are committed to doing a clinic here, uh, it, is, it all depends on when that supply is gonna become readily available. And there's more information if you watch the video uh, from Dr. Cole himself uh, about, about where we stand uh, in that process and some questions that we continue to receive here at Town Hall. Here in the County of Westchester, I, I showed that number earlier, 83,000 for Mid-Hudson. Uh, earlier today, the county executive uh, reported uh, that in total, the county has administered about 8,000 vaccinations, um, and that is mostly being done at the county center, which opened on Wednesday, uh, which is going to be open now from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Very important to remember uh, that, that you need an appointment, and you have to make that appointment via the state website, or you can call the COVID hotline number. Again, that state website is available. Uh, link is directly on the uh, on our community impact dashboard, and that COVID hotline number for those who are not on a computer is one eight three three six nine seven four eight two nine. Again, that's one eight three three six nine seven four eight two nine. We are still only in phases one A and one B, uh, but again, uh, an appointment is required. And so I know we've heard from many uh, individuals, uh, especially our seniors who have continued to try to get an appointment because they fall into phase 1A and phase 1B. Please know uh, again that the openings for the vaccination uh, slots is predicated off of the supply being, being given by uh, the state, which also comes from the federal government. So we're, we are hoping for more uh, to be coming in the, in the next few weeks. We are very optimistic. Uh, and, but again, citing Dr. Lewis Cole from Caramount, just stay patient, stay vigilant, and continue to practice those COVID-19 parameters. Oh, I don't know why that's there. COVID-19 parameters uh, that we have continued to educate the public on. I, I do want to thank our town clerk, Diana Quast. Uh, she signed, we, the two of us signed a letter uh, to our uh, state and county officials. Again, we've heard both of our offices have been inundated, especially from our seniors. Uh, about um, the vaccination process. And, and we did sign a letter just again, requesting that Yorktown be considered for a Northern Westchester regional vaccination point. Quite frankly, for our seniors, again, in particular, to ask them uh, to A, register, and then B, drive to the Westchester County Center, uh, I think is, is a very, for many, great challenge. And so if we can make that vaccine more readily available here for Northern Westchester residents. Uh, I know that our community would be uh, very appreciative and willing to work with all of our partners in government uh, in that endeavor. And so uh, again, to our town clerk, uh, thank you for your partnership and advocacy for our seniors. <laughs> we uh, have a few other notifications to share with you. People did receive another update from the water department in the mail. Um, again, uh, I wanna remind everyone, we did have our water department employees, our water superintendent, uh, uh, Ken Rundle and Jeff Dalkey, who oversees the testing of our water supply. As a reminder, in May, we do quarterly tests. And in May, there was a test done uh, during the height of COVID uh, off of 202 uh, for a pipe that feeds three buildings, no residential areas, three municipal buildings. Uh, that uh, the test 
uh, uh, exceeded the allowable limits uh, for a certain byproduct. Uh, the test was performed immediately the next day. Uh, the next day's test came back perfectly normal and it has remained uh, at normal levels ever since. However, the Department of Health continues to use a rolling average. And so we don't anticipate meeting the allowable rolling average because of that one uh, test, which at this point we do believe is an outlier. Uh, we don't believe that we're gonna reach the, that, uh, that rolling average until May. So we do anticipate at least one more notification coming to the residents of Yorktown, but there is to be very clear, uh, no issues with uh, our drinking water. We have excellent drinking water. Our water department does a phenomenal job. Uh, but again, this is a mandate by the Department of Health because of one outlier test. Our Parks and Rec staff, one of the new things that our Parks and Rec department wanted to accomplish this year was to get a, a certified member of our staff to be able to evaluate the safety of our playgrounds. Uh, we have started that process. I believe they've evaluated three playgrounds to date. Uh, and, uh, and they're going to be continuing to do that for all of our playgrounds to make sure that our kids and our children are playing on safe, uh, safe equipment. I want to acknowledge and congratulate our friends over at the Shrub Oak International School. They were the first in the town of Yorktown to utilize the commercial property assessed clean energy agreement, the CPACE deal, which the town board has been worked, has uh, approved uh, last year. Uh, thanks to thanks to our opt into this program, uh, the Shrub Oak International School uh, will be has agreed and will be permitted to, for seven million dollars in borrowing in energy efficiency upgrades. One of which includes uh, in the first uh, the CPACE financing through uh, GreenWorks Lending will finance multiple energy efficiency measures, including lighting, HVAC, and the building envelope. The energy upgrades will save the property owner an estimated of $62,662 in the first year. Uh, again, one of our initiatives uh, as we try to help our homeowners and businesses uh, green their business. And so again, that's uh, the CPACE information is available online for all of our residents and business owners to learn more about. Uh, I'm sure our highway superintendent's gonna discuss, but Veterans Road remains closed. That work is ongoing at the, again, over by Veterans and Greenwood Street. Oh, I did speak with uh, fo uh, some folks over at the United States Postal Service. We have received, uh, at this point, close to 100 reports of Postal Service disruption from our residents. Uh, again, uh, I did uh, send a letter to the regional manager. Um, the, uh, the Postal Service is very appreciative of the feedback that our town is giving. There is a link on the town website. If anyone is experiencing Postal Service disruption, you can report it and it does like you can rest assured that it does get reported back to the Postal Service. Uh, but the, um, the folks at the Postal Service, and I want to make sure we're clear, our, our delivery folks, our, our delivery men and women do a phenomenal job. They've worked through the pandemic. They've been on the front line. Um, and, and this is all COVID related because everyone's home. Everyone's utilizing the Postal Service more to make sure that they're receiving their goods since they can't go out. Uh, so the volume uh, has increased dramatically. And especially during the election, since there was, uh, again, the mail-in ballots, uh, that saw a, a record number this year as well. The Postal Service has told me as of today that they believe that they are uh, starting to see the light out of the end of that tunnel. And they do believe that we're gonna see more um, uh, dependable service from the Postal Service uh, in, in, in the coming days. But again, the Postal Service disruption link and, and portal is on the town's website. So feel free to report any disruption that you may have. I also wanna uh, thank and congratulate the Yorktown Police Department uh, Yorktown was recognized by Money Geek as one of the safest, uh, they say cities, it's really small cities, uh, safest cities in America. Uh, in fact, we were number five on the crime cost per capita. So that's just another validation of the great work that our police department continues to do every single day for our community. So I, again, I want to thank them for that. Let's see, we have an exciting opportunity uh, coming up. T-Town is again hosting their annual Eagle Fest. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Eagle Fest is a, is a tradition here uh, in, uh, in Yorktown, hosted by our friends down at T-Town. There is a link on the town's website. It will take place Saturday, January 30th through Sunday, February 7th. So it's not going to be the T-Town, the, uh, uh, the, the Eagle Fest that we've come to know uh, down at Croton Point Park. They are doing it virtually because of COVID, uh, but it is their 17th year 
and it showcases the migration of bald eagles to the Hudson River and actually was named uh, the best outdoor winter event by Hudson Valley Magazine in 2019. All this information can be found right on the town's website, but our, to our friends in T-Town who are just wonderful stewards of the environment and educators, this is a great, great program uh, for all of our residents to take part in and I encourage you to do so. We do have some volunteer opportunities available, again, for people who are looking to get involved here in the town of Yorktown. Uh, we do have an alternates position open for the planning board. We do have an alternates position for the Parks and Rec Commission. And as I've stated earlier, we are still looking for volunteers to join ABACA, which is the Architectural Review Board. All play pivotal ro roles in how town government operates. And if you're looking to get involved in any of those and looking to volunteer your time, please email me directly at mslater at yorktowny.org. Last uh, couple of things I wanted to touch upon. I, I wanted to also acknowledge and thank the Yorktown Interfaith Council and Frank Williams for a very special evening last night as we honored Martin Luther King, uh, his work, his vision, uh, and his sacrifice for our country. Uh, that was a virtual uh, day of service ceremony, and, uh, and it's something that we are looking very much forward to building upon in conjunction with the Interfaith Council. Uh, particularly, I want to thank Rabbi Robbie Weiner of Temple Beth Am uh, and all the members of the Interfaith Council who participated. It was just a, a wonderful evening, uh, a wonderful ceremony that provided such great words of wisdom and hope for, for the coming days and, and as we continue to, once again, uh, achieve Dr. King's dream of equality for everybody. I also want to thank the volunteers who came by uh, over at Willow Park on Sunday uh, as part of our Monarch Butterfly Committee. Uh, we did have uh, quite a few people come out to help uh, plant milkweed, the milkweed seeds which is the first step in, in establishing our Monarch Butterfly Sanctuary. Uh, and that's uh, part of a larger vision that we see for Willow Park uh, that we're continuing to work on. But Greg Brown uh, and Andrew Drews have been wonderful advocates of the Monarch Butterfly uh, Committee here in the town of Yorktown. And I know that they were thrilled with the outpouring of support uh, that we saw uh, from the residents. And I wanna thank everyone again for coming out and participating. The last thing I wanted to uh, just speak on I wanted to give credit and thank our building department. Uh, I received a report from our building inspector and despite the, the, the perils of COVID and despite essentially being closed for about six to eight weeks during the height of the first wave of COVID, uh, the, the building department in 2020 actually doubled the number of transactions uh, that they processed between 2020 and 2019. In 2019, there were 2,245 transactions in 2020, there were 4,223 transactions. Uh, I think what you see by the breakdown, uh, specifically, uh, a lot of residents are installing generators, uh, <laughs> which uh, with the storms and, and the outage that we've experienced uh, is understandable. Uh, uh, we had 141 pool permits filed in 2020, uh, which I think is directly related to COVID. And in comparison, in, in the year before, there were 36 filed with the building department. So quite a growth there. Uh, but again, to our building department and our building department staff, I just wanted to acknowledge the, the continued work and hard work that they have done uh, throughout 2020, as with all of our departments. But it's, a, it's great to see the building department continue to produce uh, and to see uh, the work being done on behalf of our residents. Uh, and with that, that concludes my report to the town. Uh, we'll now go over to our town board members for their reports. I'll start with Councilman Vishnu Patel. Councilman Patel? Okay, this is the live now, Councilman Patel. First with the pictures, <laughs> I had two groups from a uh, uh, community Cub Scout and uh, they wanted to know how the government works. So I explained that <clears throat> the, the town board is a governing and the legislative body of the town it, it determines the policy and is a, bra is a branch of the government that appropriates funds for the governmental functions and services. The board members terms are four years <laughs> biannually to they get elected and the supervisors term is two years. This was the basic message to them. And then they asked me the questions, you know, what I do and how they can help some of the Cub Scout they wanted to help some of the community projects. So I suggested some of them and it was really nice. You know, everybody was in a Zoom and they asked the questions and they were very happy 
that uh, we had a chance to speak to each other. And also I was happy that I was able to speak to them. And there was another, uh, the scout, uh, his life scout project. He wanted to know yesterday, and he was a sort of on a telephone uh, interview and how the, how the, you know, the, he wanted to talk about the rag race, uh, the, the law we are going to propose. And he, he was happy really that uh, there are some problems in his over community, uh, where he lives and in the town. And, uh, but also he mentioned that, that, that <laughs> Derby, you know, they have the, like a car race too. They make it too, you know? So I told him, no, this is not the one you have to worry about. <laughs> there you have to win. But in uh, driving, you know, you have to be really safe to yourself. And uh, there are some criminal uh, uh, thing can happen. People steal the car and, you know, they hurt themselves or they kill somebody else. So that was a very nice. And then other many things you have discussed, supervisor. But every time I go out in a town, I want to make sure that I check it out that them. They are way ahead, I tell you that, you know. And the weatherman was very kind. To, so they are, they are, as soon as they finish, they're looking for a check from us, okay? Thank you, and have a nice evening. Thank you, Councilman Patel. We'll go over to Councilman Diana. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Um, just a couple quick things. I want to thank, number one, our Highway Superintendent, Dave Pagnelli. I'm not going to steal his thunder on this one for getting the stop signs put up on East Main Street. And the motoring public, who... Uh, I've noticed have, have become used to them. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to see the slowdown and stop of the traffic on East Main Street, letting people pass as they should at both locations, both by, both by Stony Street and by um, Lakeland Liquors for all the electric on that end of East Main. Um, just to echo uh, the supervisor, uh, thank you to our um, uh, our interfaith group for doing a wonderful ceremony for Martin Luther King Day. It was really a great virtual ceremony. And lastly, folks, we're getting a little sloppy with our masks and with our gloves again. I'm seeing telltale signs in the shopping center parking lots and, and along the sides of the roads and so on and so forth. Folks, take them home with you. Throw them in a bag. If one of our cops catches you doing it you get a ticket it's a thousand dollar fine i don't know that any of us have that to, to spare at this day and age so you know take them home with you put them in the garbage pail it's not right that somebody else should have to pick them up in a parking lot at a um a supermarket or a deli or something like that that's all i have thank you thank you councilman diana councilwoman roker report to the town yeah um i just want to talk a I just want to say I'm one of those seniors that will be very happy when they get some COVID vaccine up in the town of Yorktown because um, staying away from people, it's getting old. Yeah. <laughs> yep. but, but I do want to say over the last couple of weeks, we've had some board meetings that I thought have been very interesting and exciting. Um, the, new, the meeting on the, the new flex districts lot of conversation, nothing specific about any particular area, but I, I do think in the long run, this will be something that proves to be really good for the town of Yorktown. Um, I love, we are working on that arts and culture committee mm -hmm. and every person we interview is better than the last person <laughs> we interview. So I'm excited about starting that. And obviously we're starting that on Zoom um, and the other thing that I, I too would like to thank Mr. Thank you and thank Mr. Williams for coming up and and just giving giving us what I consider was an inspirational discussion on Dr. King. And the hope is that the town as a whole, we will join together and work on a project for next year because that is really the purpose of the holiday. It's not meant to take it off. It's meant to take it on. And, and I think um, we'll take on suggestions for something we, you know, the town we could all do, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we will begin to celebrate this uh, as a yearly event. As am I, uh, as am I councilwoman. And, and I know that we've had conversations with the Interfaith Council about establishing a Martin Luther King committee. 
uh, to help work on that. And, uh, and, and Mr. Williams was just phenomenal. I mean, just the things that he brought to, to the discussion um, and the programs that he runs, you know, the, the things that hopefully we're going to be able to engage in as, you know, and bring to our community, I think will be uh, immensely helpful as well as we continue to uh, educate and as we continue to uh, do our part to ensure equality is a, is a guarantee for everybody. So I, I appreciate that. Councilman Lachterman, report to the town. Well, uh, I will also start by echoing how great I thought the, uh, the, the presentation was yesterday. And uh, Mr. Williams was phenomenal. I actually had a conversation with him today already. Uh, just from some of my background, there's some things that we might be able to uh, work together with. Uh, have a couple of uh, very interesting young men that I have worked with in the few in the past that uh, may may be great speakers for him and and uh, yeah, yeah and really a, a tribute to uh, to exactly what he was talking about yesterday in in, uh, in our overcoming so um, to get to the other things I did want to. Uh, give a shout out to our PD. We did have five officers involved in a Narcon save uh, recently where our, yep, where our uh, ambulance corps basically said that without the quick interaction of the police department, uh, the person would not have made it. And I think, I think one, of the, uh, one of the other things is, you know, some people say, well, you know, police are selective, police are this, police are that. And, you know, we talk about how you don't lump people into a group uh, this is this is someone who had had some issues with our police department in the past and has not been a friend of theirs, so to speak. It did not matter. It was a life that needed to be saved, and our, our uh, professional department jumped in and did what needed to be done. Um, I wanted to talk about the, uh, the vaccine as well, uh, but from the veterans' point of view. So with the, uh, with the VA, they are offering... Uh, the vaccine, apparently, uh, you know, I had a report from, I'm sure he's watching, Mr. Grasso, who went through the process at the VA, and it was not your typical army, hurry up and wait. It was very efficient, very well run. The only thing that's a little weird, to get an appointment at the Montrose campus, you actually call the VA at Castle Point. And the number, if you have a pen, is 845-833- Seven six six eight. Once again, eight four five eight three eight seven six six eight. Now the uh, the appointments are for veterans seventy five or older. But if you are a veteran with either diabetes, respiratory illness, or obese, and uh, and under the age of seventy five, please let them know that, and they are able to make some accommodations. Uh, at the VA based on uh, being in a higher risk group. I believe that the same thing is, is available for our veterans at the county uh, with the number that uh, Supervisor Slater gave before. Uh, and at both instances, as a veteran, you should ask about your spouse if they're able to get vaccinated as well, especially through the VA. So uh, that's... Uh, Eight four five eight three eight seven six six eight at the for the Castle Point to make an appointment in Montrose, uh, and then just to say we had to cancel both our Veterans Advisory Committee this month uh, due to uh, the V the uh, VFW Hall not being available. Uh, next month we will look at either in person or going to Zoom through that if we need to. And uh, the Sons of the American Legion have canceled their uh, breakfast, which is normally the third Sunday of the month, due to the, uh, the uptick of numbers uh, decided to be better safe than sorry. Great. Uh, I have a, uh, one comment. I uh, forgot to mention it. Uh, during the yesterday's meeting, you know, they asked about the food pantry. I would like to mention to the community and just tell them that it's good to give the food if you have it, but then you have to buy and take it or like that. But if you donate uh, the, the cash contribution any way you want, then when they purchase the, the food item 
sometimes they have a matching grant. You know, you give them $1, they got $2 food or $3. So yeah. if you can do this way, it's easier for you sometimes. This way you don't have to go and, and, and give it to them if you are not able to go there. So this would be really nice thing to do because there is still a big need, you know, because economy is in a not good shape, the weather, the COVID and everybody, everything else. So please help where you can because nobody should go hungry in top of this COVID. So thank you, those who have done it and please continue to do it. Thank you, Councilman Patel. It's a great reminder. Uh, and again, I wanna thank, uh, we have both Catherine Fraze at the First Presbyterian Church and Cindy Smith of the St. Mary's Food Pantries, who are also leading our Food Security Task Force, uh, which is uh, looking and examining the issue of hunger within the town of Yorktown. They did report both food pantries uh, saw the volume of need quadruple during the height of the first wave uh, during COVID. And since then, uh, it has reduced itself, the, the demand, but they're still double of what they were averaging. And so the, the, the need is there. It's right here in our community. And, and it's important and to, to acknowledge that hunger uh, is here in the town of Yorktown. Food insecurity is an issue within the town of Yorktown. And it was appropriate to, to recognize them because one of uh, the three evils that Dr. King spoke about was poverty. And so we thought it was appropriate to hear from our, our leaders of our food security task force. But to Councilman Patel's point, in addition to uh, food donations, which can always be uh, dropped off at both the First Presbyterian Church and St. Mary's, you can also send monetary donations to both of those organizations as well as feeding Westchester uh, in it as well, which continues to support them. We'll go over to our highway superintendent uh, for a report, Dave Paganelli. Uh, good evening, Yorktown board members, supervisor. Um, snow on the way tomorrow, nothing to be concerned about. Somewhere around 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., dusting to an inch. Um, as I said, nothing to be concerned about. We have, um, as most people have seen us out and about, doing a tremendous amount of drainage work. The weather has been very cooperative and we've eliminated a couple of icing, perennial icing situations. Um, we are making daily trips down to Pro Asphalt on the Mount Vernon Bronx border with our um, hot box that we purchased last year and bringing back three tons of hot asphalt. So we are doing potholes. Um, I'll ask our residents, if you do have potholes that haven't been filled, please call the office 962-5781 and make us aware of them. Um, also, we are, um, Con Edison and NYSIG have been doing a tremendous amount of tree work around town. Um, there should, when they leave these logs on the side of the road, they should not be there for more than a week, a week and a half at the most. If you do notice that they are in that location longer than that, please call our office and make us aware of it so that we can make them aware of it. Part of the um, pre preemptive cleaning is that they will clean up what they take down. So just, you know, be aware of that. And so far, so good. Winter's almost half over as far as we're concerned and we're pretty happy. <laughs> Who jinx it? <laughs> no, and um, to Tommy's point, gr great job on your part, Tommy, with respect to the... Um, pushing forward on those stop signs. Um, people have been very, very good about it. It's um, been well received and, you know, with, with minor, minor grumbling. So, you know, I think that was a tremendously wise decision. So thank you. And I'll conclude with that. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate all that you. And thank you. For the town. Thank we'll you. move on to a proclamation. I'm sorry. Did someone want to, did someone say something? No, no. we're going to move on to the pro a proclamation. Uh, in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which was yesterday. Uh, I'll read the proclamation in its entirety. Whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his, li his life to strengthening the American character and called on our nation to live up to its foundational principles of equality, freedom, and justice. And whereas through his determination, spirit, and resolve, Dr. King led several iconic and nonviolent movements in the name of equality, freedom, and justice. And whereas the Yorktown Interfaith Council and the town of Yorktown honored Dr. King's legacy of community action by hosting its first annual day of service ceremony. And whereas the town of Yorktown established the food security task force to combat hunger within our community, which was also a focus of Dr. King's vision. And whereas the town of Yorktown town board finds it fit and proper to acknowledge and celebrate the legacy of this great American and remember the ideals 
for which he fought for. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Yorktown, excuse me, that the Yorktown Town Board pauses in its deliberations to honor and remember the life and teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And be it further resolved that the, ten, but the Yorktown Town Board encourages all residents of the town to perform acts of kindness and service to others in the name of Dr. King. So moved. Exactly. A motion from Councilman Lachman, a second from Councilman Diana. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Any comments from the board before we go to our poet laureate? There being none, we we'll welcome John McMullen, our poet laureate. John, good evening. Good evening, Supervisor. Thank you, and to all the board. Onward. We move into 2021 full of hope. Vaccine, change administration, economy rebounds, new technologies, infrastructure investments, greater racial understanding. It should be a very good year. Slow down. Think about 2020. At this time, we'd never heard of pandemics. Didn't know that friends, neighbors, and, and 400,000 of them would die. Could not conceive of lockdowns, unemployment, masks. Never thought we would see the George Floyd incidents. Did not expect the ongoing craziness of the US election. But it all happened. So we don't know. Yes, onward. But as I used to say in the old neighborhood, stay loose. And remember, man plans, God laughs. Proverbs 1921. Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, John Lennon. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. And isn't that isn't that the truth? Man plans and God laughs. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to go over to courtesy of the floor. We're going to turn it over to our uh, town clerk, Diana Quas, to let us to, to let people in one at a time. I do want to remind uh, our guests for courtesy of the floor uh, that again we do have a three minute time limit. Uh, so please, if you can, do your best to uh, adhere to that time limit, and our town clerk uh, will give you a reminder. Uh, as you get closer to that time. Diana? So the first one is, I only have a phone number on it. So they're gonna have to state who they are. Okay. 914-400-7722. Uh, Could you please let us know who you are for the record? Hi, Matt, it's Lynn. I'm actually just listening. Oh, hi, Lynn. Okay. You, uh, How you, you doing? You, you, anything for the board that you wanna discuss? No, not at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Hope you're doing well. Sure. Thank you. Yep, I am. You? We're, do we're doing good. <laughs> we're doing good. good. All right, good. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, mm -hmm. next. Next is Dr. Regina Keshian. Okay, Dr. Keshian, how are you? Anything for the board that you want to discuss? No, not at this time. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Hope you're doing well. Sure. Thank you. Yep, I am you. We're doing we're doing good. <laughs> we're doing good. good. Is that All really right. what I sound like? <laughs> oh boy. Next is Dr. Regina Keshian. Hi. Okay, Dr. Keshian, how are you? Very Dr. Keshian, are you listening on a uh, on a computer with, yes. with the website? If, would you mind just just muting or or, or, or acting onto the website or or? No, or, not uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. For the, the web page. You. Yep, I am you. We're doing okay. Is that Excellent. better? Yeah, yeah, much. Thank you so much. Sorry All about right. that. Sure. Oh, hold on one second, Dr. Keshin. You just muted yourself. So if you can unmute. Okay. All right. So good evening. Um, hopefully my three minutes starts now. Um, good evening, Supervisor Slater. Good evening, members of the board. Um, as, as said, and my name is Regina Cassian, and I'm speaking on behalf of a group of citizens of Yorktown. We're very passionate about our town, highly motivated and very invested. Um, we want to in, in, ensure that you, the elected officials, are, are responsive toward um, how we feel. And um, we just want to put forth what we think is in the best interest of our town. So um, I'm speaking for many people when I tell you that we are very appreciative of the efforts made by the town thus far to respond both flexibly and with innovation to our rapidly changing landscape. Um, we're changing politically, socially, economically in this world. Um, and, I, and we appreciate that these are challenging times for you guys to govern. Um, now more than ever, we have to be nimble. We have to find creative solutions for long entrenched problems, which include 
equitable um, access to housing, um, affordability for our seniors, um, and the ability to move forward while honoring our past um, and also preserving our environment. So to that end, I just wanna say that an overlay district as a concept um, definitely does stand to address the goals of our elected officials and um, also the will of the people. We want to re revitalize our downtown areas. Um, we want to create a sense of community, um, improving walkability. We want to create opportunities for small businesses with mixed use buildings. Um, and we do want to continue to make Yorktown a destination location for both the diverse and productive group of people. The issue, as I think a group of us see it, is that the Soundview property does not belong in the overlay district. So I can appreciate the tremendous pressure that I think the town board is under, um, but I do believe that it is the duty of the town board to address an issue when it's of this magnitude. So major land use decisions, such as changing um, from single family zone to multifamily zone, um, must be made by the people that we elect. So this process has to be transparent. Um, the opportunities for public input have to be plentiful. So I, I wanna just be clear and, and make no mistake. I think most of us recognize that developers have the right to purchase property and to develop that proper, property within the confines of the law. Um, most of us also recognize that Yorktown, just like many other places in Westchester County is in need of some relief. Um, we need an infusion of some vitality. Um, we need more varied housing options for people, more parks, and we need more um, opportunities for our seniors. So I'm not really asking that um, Mr. Gallaro and his unicorn uh, development team be stopped. Um, what I'm asking is that the town board recognize the magnitude of this project and the sensitivity of this particular historical an environmentally important piece of land and the buildings um, and to not include that in the overlay district. So again, I just wanna say, it's not that I don't trust our public servants, our planning board does a tremendous job. And I do think when uh, an application like this eventually gets on their desk, they're gonna do a terrific job um, and, and do what they do best. But we're, I just don't think that we should be short circuiting the process, particularly for this Soundview parcel. Um, I think it stands as like a gateway to our community. Um, and let's just be honest, this developer, um, you know, he, he's here for e economic reasons. Um, and, and really, that's kind of it. And he'll be moving on to another project or another town. Um, so I just would ask that you consider our point of view. I thank you. I thank you for your time. I know it's valuable. And I just want to say thanks for all you do for, your, for the town. And thanks for listening. Thank you, Dr. Casey. And we appreciate your, your feedback. It's very important. Very much. Thank you. Next it looks is Elise Graham. OK. Hello, Elise. How are you? I'm fine. How's everyone? Good. How are you, Elise? I'm good. Miss you. <laughs> um, I also want to say a few words um, about the Soundview Historic property. Um, I oppose the uh, inclusion of this property in an overlay zone and would like the property to be rezoned through the existing process of going through the town board. Um, a property of this kind of distinction needs greater attention, greater scrutiny, during the rezoning process, not less. This um, is a dramatic uh, change of use for this property um, and believe that this should go through the town board so that the people of this town have an ample opportunity to weigh in on the project at town board meetings via, via uh, courtesy of the floor. Um, I believe many residents uh, will have many questions. Um, I have, I have some. Um, why is this property included in the overlay zone? I, I too, uh, like Dr. Kishin, understand and applaud the many advantages of an overlay zone. It can be a very useful positive town planning tool with environmental downtown revitalization and other positive effects, but it is not a one size fits all for all towns and all properties. The Clearview historic property should not be included in an overlay zone. Yorktown Heights doesn't seem to me to appear to have the criteria for benefiting from an overlay zone being imposed at that particular site. Uh, most, if not all, of the 165 residential units 
in the proposed development will surely be two car households canceling out a proposed environmental benefit. There's no Metro North Railroad within walking distance. And let's face it, proximity to the Beeline bus is not a preferred commuting option. As a longtime resident of this town, uh, I can attest, unfortunately, <laughs> that the, our downtown um, business district is not really vibrant and walkable at this time. The households of Soundview development won't be walking to town. Despite proximity, they will be driving like the rest of us. On these points and others, I won't bore you with comparisons to other Westchester towns where the criteria for success of overlay zoning seems much better. Towns like Pleasantville, Katona, Chappaqua, Croton, and many others that have a more direct access to commuter transportation. There are many critical questions to be raised and time tonight won't allow for most of them, but I would be remiss if I did not ask about density. What kind of outlandish density is proposed for these 13 acres? Um, as it's zoned now, 13 one family homes on one acre are allowed. In the overlay zone, 165 residential units, that's nuts. Um, but it's pretty easy to see how they got there. With an overlay zone, anything goes. So the developer kind of goes for a crazy high number of units knowing, you know, knowing the dance. Um, the developer proposes 165 units, expects local outrage, cuts back on the number, project gets approved, but with a density that's still unacceptable, especially for this location. But hey, they compromised. Um, sadly, um, what I and many others really want is untenable. We would like to see this development disappear to go away. We know that this is paving paradise to put up a parking lot, not unlike when your town heights in a fit of urban renewal in the 60s, 70s, knock things down to erect the patchwork of unconnected, ugly strip shopping centers that now define our downtown. We will lose this precious, historic, and beautiful property. I want to remind the board that the greatest gift that a town board can give a community is to be a board with great foresight, to make decisions that look far into the future. So we don't always look back and say, what if? What if the town had maintained and not raided the open space fund? Could the town have been in a better position to perhaps have purchased this property? Who knows? Thank you, Elise. Thank you, Elise. Be Next is uh, Jay Kopstein. Okay. Mr. Kopstein, good evening. Good evening. I'm I'm not on courtesy of the floor. I'm on the public hearing. Understood. I'll hold on to you. Thank you. I have uh, Jenna Jaramillo. Okay. Jenna, is Jenna on? I don't, I'm sorry, I don't see her. I let her in. She's still joining. Okay. I'm going to move on and we can come back to her, I guess. That's um, fine. Jenny Metten. Okay. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. To me, okay? Yeah. Hi, Jenny. Hi, hey, it's great to see everybody. I can't wait when we have our regular meetings so we can come in. I think I'd better get off my computer and just. Well, no, you know what? No, no, Jenny, stay on your computer, but turn off the TV or mute the TV. Yes, yeah, turn the TV off. Okay, how's that better? Much. Thank you. Okay. No, I just wanted to say hello to everybody. It's great seeing you. Um, I, I, should I be on my computer? I don't see me on my computer. Yeah, we can see you and we can hear you perfectly fine. You're, you're, okay. You're, all right. Um, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I just want to really thank the board because you're really doing a lot of great things. 
Uh, I don't have a speech tonight. I just wanted to get on and tell you I was so happy to read about the article in the paper about the Underhill Farms. I know we've had a couple of people there that uh, are against it for many reasons, and I'm sure this will happen. I kind of disagree with some of them, but I know we will be having a public meeting and uh, I will vo really voice my concerns there. I just want them to know that I know quite a few of the seniors in the um, Beaver Ridge Center, and there are quite a few of them from the Beaver Ridge that will walk to the shopping area. They go to Uncle Giuseppe's, they go, they have their walker, whatever. I know there's one little gal that she's even older than I am, and you guys know how old I am, and she does the walking, so I don't think that's a problem. I think that's a great problem that we would have because there are a lot of seniors that don't have cars and cannot walk, you know, I cannot drive. So the walking situation is great. So I'm just going to say thank you, thank you, thank you for so much that you guys have done. And I can't wait. I haven't heard anything yet, but I can't wait to find out who the surprise market is going to be at Lowe's because everybody's been asking us. And I think that's going to be another great addition for us. And, uh, and I have a lot of faith and confidence in our board. We have a great board. I know after hearing everybody, you will make the right decision on what to do for our town. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you in person at a meeting. Thank you. Tony. Thank you, Jenny. Hello, Tony. Thanks, Jenny. Hello, Tony. I like you. Always uh, nice to see you. I'd like to comment a little bit on the article that uh, Brian from the Yorktown News uh, wrote, I believe, on the 14th of January. I certainly agreed uh, with a lot of the things he mentioned. As you know, I'm here in Yorktown for 57 years. I had the honor of serving the town board. And before this uh, comeback, I attended all board meetings and planning board meetings. It's the planning board and the town board where these decisions are made. I'm quite familiar with the overlay uh, uh, system that was uh, enacted, and I agree it's a good for the town. The property is not strange to me. During my term on the town board uh, on several occasions, Nancy Elliott and uh, Bonnie O'Brien and I would go there for lunch with the owner. Uh, she was a very lovely lady, and the home itself is uh, quite fashionable. The Underhill Road was named after Judge Underhill, who owned all that property in that area. But I won't get into the history of that. There's not that much time. I am for an overlay district in that part of town. It is the gateway to Yorktown, and with the new medical building that was put up just around the corner, it adds to the town. It shows Yorktown as a very vibrant community. I'm only sorry that the new uh, town garage was not built for the highway department, because that would have been a lynch pig pinned to the town itself. The uh, Plans I have not seen as yet. However, I'm sure that uh, once they're filed, the uh, planning board will allow me to come up, as they do to any person, to uh, look at the plans and see how they're designed. I like the fact that, the, according to the newspaper, the uh, prices would be market price. So they would have uh, homes for different price levels in that area. Uh, which is good for everybody. Seniors at my age, at 94 years of age, uh, we like to download. We can't download unless we have some place to go. And after 57 years in this town, I've seen it develop and I would love to stay here. My children were raised here, they were educated here, and because of that education plus their college education, they've done quite well uh, for themselves. Uh, I, I, I can go on and on, but uh, I will save my uh, uh, comments for the, if there's a public hearing or before it goes to the uh, uh, planning board. 
I was only sorry to read an article a couple of weeks ago from one of our former supervisors who criticized the procedures that was taken. Uh, she should have known better uh, because she served on the town board. I used to attend town board uh, meetings with her and with Jay. In fact, we were known as the, uh, the big three because we spoke out the way we felt and we uh, helped the town along the way because let's face it, if it wasn't for old people like myself that knew the past, some of the modern people on the board really don't know the past. And the best way we can go forward to know where we came from. With that, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the town board, uh, it's time for me to go to bed and uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you at another time. And the reason we're looking up that way is because our TV is above our fireplace. So we're not looking up in the ceiling, we're looking at the TV. <laughs> So I'll work it out differently next time. Thank, thank you both. Yes, we appreciate you. your comments. Thank it's always you. good to see you both. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Diana. Diana, who else we have? Jenna's on. Okay. Hi, I'm, I'm, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So sorry about my technical difficulties earlier. No I'm problem. trying to watch you and, and get led into the Zoom at the same time on the computer. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for having me. Um, I agree with Regina and Elise who spoke earlier. The reason the town view property should be taken out of New York Town Heights. I'm sorry, hold on, I'm sorry, Jenna. Hold on one second. D uh, Diana, can you just mute everyone else but, but the town board and Jenna, please, just to make sure that no one interrupts her? Thank you. I think I got them off. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Appreciate Thank you. It. That's okay. Um, uh, so I agree with Regina and Elise that the Soundview property should be taken out of the Yorktown Heights overlay district map and that the new owner should come before the town board to request a rezoning for multifamily and possible <coughs> added mixed use in order to hopefully save the main building and its historic integrity and beauty. The overlay district uh, map will allow the Soundview property to be rezoned without going through the traditional rezoning process. And I believe it should follow the standard town board protocol. On a personal note, um, my husband and I purchased our home less than a year and a half ago, right around the corner from the Soundview property. We love our, our neighborhood and we learned early on um, that while we and our neighbors love to walk through the quiet streets, they are often used as a traffic cut through for people trying to avoid the ongoing jams occurring at 118 and Underhill and further down at 118 and 202. Our neighborhood connects Underhill Ave to Baldwin Road. Um, so I understand the desire to develop the property at Soundview, but the extreme concern I have with the magnitude of the proposed development is the severe impact it would have on the quiet neighborhood in which we live. Glen Rock Road, which is the road exactly uh, behind the Soundview property, is very narrow. So narrow, in fact, that two cars driving in opposite directions can barely fit side by side going in opposite directions. Uh, it is already a hazard for anyone walking or driving. So imagine hundreds more cars backed up on Underhill and subsequently using our neighborhood as a cut through. We have bus, bus stops throughout our neighborhood. Glen Rock Road and Giordano Drive have school buses that st stop mornings and afternoons with children walking and waiting along the route. The addition of hundreds more cars cutting through this neighborhood would be a major safety hazard for our school children. My concerns and those of my neighbors warrant action to keep our streets safe with this sizable increase in density. So as a first step, uh, the Soundview property should be taken out of the district overlay map. And once the developer has gone through the traditional protocol for rezoning, additional steps must be in order. At the very least, we need Unicorn to do a comprehensive traffic density study. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. We appreciate your input. Diana, who do we have next? Next, I have Megan and John. Who? I'm sorry. Say that again. Just, I only have Megan and John. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening, uh, Supervisor Slater, members hey, of the John. board. My, my name is John Flynn. I uh, live in the Heights. Um, yeah. Thanks for this opportunity to speak with you about Yorktown Heights Plan District Design Overlay Zone. 
if I've got that name right. It's quite a mouthful. Um, I'm just going to set my timer so I don't go over. Okay. Um, I served two towns on uh, two terms on the town zoning board and three on the town planning board. And I'd like to base my critique of the overlay zone on that experience. Um, the proposal that you're looking at is, uh, uh, has a number of features, one of them promoting economic development, another uh, building a, uh, a, a work walkable Hamlet style uh, development in the Heights. And I wanna speak to both of those. Uh, my first concern is whether the overlay zone is necessary uh, to provide economic development. Uh, during the 1990s, the zoning board uh, approved parking variances to allow construction of a BJ store on Route 202. And we used cross easements to share parking with the adjacent property. And this revitalized the failing mall, the old famous uh, White's department store, uh, without the need for overlay districts. And as to uh, revitalizing the heights, it uh, is, uh, I want to just remind you uh, that uh, during uh, uh, nearly all the buildings on the south side of Commerce Street, uh, from the Wells Fargo Bank all the way down to the Gulf Station, were replaced during my time on these th uh, boards. And we approved and the developers built all new, all these new buildings uh, without recourse to any uh, type of overlay uh, district. Um, now, to get to the um, walkable hamlet, um, by, and which is to be achieved by allowing development with fewer parking spaces, I guess I, I took some lumps here because I was sort of an advocate of walking and, um, and minimizing the amount of asphalt uh, that we put around buildings. Uh, but I, I soon learned that uh, the efforts in, uh, to restrict parking in Yorktown are, are, are pretty futile. Um, I'll give you some examples. The Starbucks on Commerce Street, uh, are, when I was on the zoning board, we approved that uh, with minimal parking spaces in order to uh, preserve a patio uh, on the uh, nice patio on the front of the building. Uh, but everybody arrives there by car and they uh, overflow parking tends to fill up the Mitchell hardware parking lot uh, against the owner's um, uh, permission. Uh, the Chase Street on Commerce Street, the uh, Chase Bank on Commerce Street, uh, that one is, is one that again, we uh, build very tight parking design uh, to, um, uh, to uh, accommodate a, 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 a memorial tree on the site. And uh, the, when I first visited that bank after it opened, the, uh, the staff there volunteered that there were a lot of fender benders in the parking lot because of the, because of the uh, undersized parking lot and people trying to crowd in with their cars. And, and then finally, I'd give you uh, the uh, Uncle Giuseppe's and Turco's um, uh, grocery stores in that uh, old style parking, uh, 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 old style big parking lot. Um, big setback uh, development that's famous throughout town for its lack of parking spaces. And I just ask you to ponder as my time runs out here, what parking there would be like if that sto store was built today uh, with the restricted parking that you're envisioning in this proposed overlay district. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. We appreciate you, John. You know, your, your <clears throat> through all your experience serving the town. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Jenny Sunshine. Hi, Jenny. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much. Thanks um, for joining us. Yes, thank you um, for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, I would also like to um, talk about the Soundview project as well. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand why the Soundview property was included in the boundaries for the Yorktown Heights Overlay District. Um, and like the other speakers, I support taking it out of that. Um, I have seen the overlay zoning map and I find it rather arbitrary that the Soundview property was included in this. When um, the planning director was asked at a recent meeting why the Soundview property was included, um, he, he said something like it had a new owner so it seemed appropriate to include it in the district but I just don't understand that. Uh, it, it makes sense to include commercially zoned properties in the Hamlet, but what's the rationale for including a large one acre single family zoned parcel? If your goal is to have more people live closer to the Hamlet so that there might be more customers for local businesses, then there are other parcels on the fringe of that Hamlet that could also be included. So why not those parcels too on the map? And why include the weigh-in site since that's already been rezoned? 
Or why not include all of Front Street instead of just the upper part of by the highway garage? Or how about this, including all of the properties that are closest to the Yorktown Hamlet, since those residents live closer and could easily walk to town to utilize the businesses in the Yorktown Hamlet. It just doesn't make sense. And again, it seems arbitrary to include the Soundview property in the overlay district. And of course, given the uniqueness, the specialness of the Soundview property for historic reasons, for its architecture, for its beautiful land and open space, and for its key location within the Yorktown area, then it makes more sense to deal with this property separately. So um, please remove the Soundview property from the overlay district. Um, that's all I had to say, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Next, we have Rosemary Panio. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Rosemary. Happy yeah. New Year to all of you. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Well. I'm glad you're all well. Uh, as you know, I have been an advocate for senior housing for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, I've been an, uh, an advocate for options for seniors as we outgrow our ability to maintain a large house, a large piece of property, and so on. Um, we would still, though, like to remain among our family, among our friends, uh, at our house, near our houses of worship, and our safe, familiar settings. Thanks to modern medicine, we're all living a lot longer into 90s, but we certainly can't do it 85 or 90, what we did when we were younger. So we have to look for ways to, to get this done for us so that we do have housing options. Preservation of the, of the old building is wonderful. It's a beautiful building and the beautiful ceilings, carved work, and that will be not only preserved, but improved because it is rather run down at this point in time. Um, and I, I certainly am for uh, preserving our, our heritage, but we also have to remember that we have a duty to our seniors and we have a duty to our elders because we wanna keep them in this town. Uh, we want them to maintain their quality of life and their well-being. Uh, I think we should take this journey together and look at the proposals of this project very thoroughly. It can be great. No project winds up as it starts out. I've learned that having served on many boards in the town. Uh, we will, however, have the gain a senior center. Beaver Ridge will have new neighbors. And uh, the residents of the town will have added tax revenue because as I believe this is not on the tax rolls at this point in time, having been a, uh, um, a tax exempt uh, operation. Um, I just wanna remind everyone that we're gonna take this journey together. Uh, we, we're gonna have an opportunity to really review this very thoroughly. And we also here can't pass up an opportunity to help our seniors and elders achieve what they've been trying to do for so long. Uh, we stand ready at the Senior Advisory Committee. All of us have wonderful neighbor, wonderful uh, members uh, to work with you and every board. Uh, we are committed to making life safer and better for our elders, our veterans, our seniors. Uh, I'm happy that this beautiful house will be preserved. I, I've been inside of it, uh, was inside of it recently. It's beautiful. Uh, the project provides market rate housing for seniors a safe place to walk, to exercise, right on the premises, walking distance to uh, food stores and public transportation. This is a great plus, as well as a medical building right across the street. So let's be positive. Let's look at the negatives. Let's look at the positives and come to this conclusion together. Uh, the, the project appears to check many of the boxes there are some that we maybe don't approve of, but let's work it out together and, uh, and try to do the best thing. And as I said, my advocacy here is for seniors. So I will be as objective as I possibly can and, and work with any board, including the town board. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Rosemary. I'm sorry. Thank you, Rosemary. We appreciate your <laughs> Thank comments. you. Next we have Susan Siegel. 
Mm -hmm. Legal. Good evening. Welcome. Ms. Siegel, I think you're you're muted. You need to yeah, unmute your computer. Right now. Thank you. All right. By the way, I don't know if anybody told you, but every so often the um, the live stream has gone off. And I know you had that problem, I think, last week or the week before. I, I just want to let you know um, so you can figure out and Tom can figure out what the problem is. Back in October, when you held the public hearing for the overlay law, I supported the law. I agree that sometimes the existing zoning code can be too rigid and that it makes sense to add some flexibility to the planning process. But when I supported the law, it was to use your words, just a framework, and the public was not aware of any specific development plans for any of the proposed overlay districts. Mm -hmm. Even on December 8th, when the first draft of the Yorktown Heights boundaries and guidelines were unveiled, there was no mention of any specific development. So I think you can imagine my surprise and the surprise of many others in the community when the very next day, a major development within the proposed Yorktown Heights district was unveiled. I'm talking about the Underhill Farm Plan um, for, this, for the Soundview site. It was even more surprising that a development plan had, for the Soundview site had already been prepared for 165 unit multifamily development even though we all knew that the property was zoned for one acre development, which is why I have a question for the board. Can you explain when Unicorn Contracting, the proposed developer of the Soundview site, knew that the Soundview parcel would be included in the Yorktown Overlay District and what the allowed density in the district would be? Did Unicorn have any input in developing the standards as well as specifically asking that the Soundview site be included in the Yorktown Heights Overlay District? I'm asking because it's very obvious that the overlay concept is being used as a backdoor or a de facto way to rezone the Soundview property from one acre to sing from one acre single family to multifamily zoning without, as many other speakers have said, without going through the regular zoning process, a process that many other developers interested in developing multifamily housing have been required by the town to follow. And many of those developments, you could also say, would have revitalized some of our hamlets. Let me just go through, list some of those. Croton Overlook, that's a project that came, a rezoning request that came before you just, just three months ago from five acre to, to a multifamily zone. The summit in Jefferson Valley, that certainly could have revitalized the Jefferson Valley hamlet. The Wyant, which has already been rezoned. So why is that in the overlay district? The Roma building, which is still pending. Um, and then there's compound terraces. That was done in 2015 when I was on the town board. When that rezoning was approved, the resolution specifically limited the number of units per acre to six per acre, even though it was being rezoned at 12 units per acre, which is what the Underhill Farm is coming in on. So again, I ask, why is the Soundview parcel being treated differently from all those other multifamily rezoning requests? I think that if you think the site is suitable for multifamily housing, and personally I do, then why aren't you requiring the developer to go through the regular zoning process that all those other developers did? Or is there a reason why you're treating the Soundview properly, Soundview site differently? Is there some reason why that developer is being given basically what amounts to special treatment? I think Yorktown residents are entitled to answers to those questions. Thank you. Next is Patricia Sullivan Rothberg. Hi everyone, good evening. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Trish Sullivan Rothberg. I'm a 16 year resident of Yorktown. I live in a historic home and I cherish Yorktown's history. I feel strongly too that the Underhill property does not belong in the overlay district and should be taken out, echoing Regina, Elise, and Jenna. The inclusion of Underhill Farm in the Yorktown Heights Hamlet is seems arbitrary and an accommodation to the developer. It serves no benefit to the residents of Yorktown. This project I think should have the same review process as the summit 
and be held to the same standards as the Rochambeau condos across the way, which what they were held to in terms of density, traffic, infrastructure. Many of the seniors in the Rochambeau condos are very concerned about traffic, safety, density, and the sheer size of this new development. As you know, Rochambeau has 48 units on seven acres, 165 units on, I think it might be 12, will be massive in size. Um, to that end, would the town board please publish for residents on the town website somewhere the uh, secret process for the, that the developer will be following, um, the steps, the milestones, the dates, and the deliverables, including specific environmental impact assessments that will be completed and public comment opportunities. Residents, including myself, are passionate about Yorktown and its history. The way this project is being fast-tracked has residents very concerned with spotty timelines, transparency, and frankly, trust. We want this historic treasure to be treated with the respect it deserves and for it to serve the town first and the developer second. Um, it should follow the traditional process, be taken out of the overlay district. And I strongly urge the town board to take this property out of the um, overlay district. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. And the last one I have is Sergio under Nancy's name. Yeah, we keep using the same. Uh, hold on, I'll change it. I want to be official. <laughs> there we go. Better? Gotcha. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? We're good, Sergio. Thank you for joining us. Alice, I wanted to touch on something that you were talking about, the Arts and Culture Committee. Um, as you know, it's a joint venture between the town and, and the Chamber of Commerce, and we're very uh, excited and proud to be in that partnership with you guys. Uh, we have already uh, uh, chosen our, uh, I believe it's a five-member committee, we have already chosen our two uh, appointees, and we're excited for the town to choose their three, um, and then we'll have our co-chairs, as we, as we stated. Um, so I'm really excited about it. I think it's something that... Um, you know, we're ready to go. So, uh, you know, I think uh, I think it'd be a great thing to kind of like move it ahead. And I know you guys feel the same way. Yeah, I have someone that I'd like the board to interview. We've interviewed quite a few, but I still have someone I want the board to interview. Yeah, so that's great. So we're ready. So, um, you know, we're going to be talking about it tomorrow at, at our <laughs> meeting, um, our board meeting. So um, we're ready to go and I'm excited to start planning, and planning you know, for the town. Uh, secondly, uh, the chamber is going to be hosting a, we, we started a business diversity team. It's a committee um, in, at the chamber, and we're going to be hosting a, uh, a business social with our with a speaker, uh, April Francis, and she's going to talk about diversity and diversity in business and that kind of stuff. And that's coming late, uh, late February. Uh, we haven't set the date yet. I'm going to try to push it to get be a little sooner. Um, but, you know, the idea is going back to you know, uh, I know everybody, uh, we, we talk about uh, diversity issues, uh, but I don't think there's enough being done and education wise. And I think this is our first step for the chamber in, uh, you know, getting, uh, getting that the word out and, and education. She's a great speaker. I've spoken to her. We actually wanted her to come in for a meeting before COVID. Um, I had an extensive meeting with her um, and, um, and then COVID hit and everything kind of <clears throat> got messed up. But um, so that's that's where we are in terms of our business diversity team. If anybody has any ideas or if anybody wants to be part of that team uh, on behalf of the, with the chamber, I mean, I'd be happy to. Uh, okay. I mean, the more the merrier. Right. Uh, and, and it's better. Um, as far as the Salmue property, um, I tell you, I, I know that uh, that that uh, uh, someone mentioned, you know, that the property needs to be treated with respect. I can tell you that. The school did not respect that property enough. I was in the main building um, and it's, it's, it's still nice, you know, but it, it really needs a lot of investment for it to come back to where everybody remembers it once was. And it, it's really not there right now. I know that there's a lot of uh, proposals out there, part of the proposal. And I don't think everybody has really heard everything about it. It's, I, don't, I don't really think it's being fast-tracked in the sense that it hasn't really 
nothing has really happened with, with the whole proposal yet. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I don't think anything has. So, um, you know, and then, and then there's, there's like nefarious kind of like undertones that I kind of hear. And, and I think we should all reserve our judgment, hold off, um, and, you know, keep an open mind and be reasonable. And let's get, let's hear the proposals first. I know that they're open to inviting people in to look at the property and that kind of stuff as well. And that the house is going to be fully maintained and fully preserved. It's not going away uh, like some people kind of alluded to. It's not getting knocked down. It's not going to change. It's actually going to be uh, kept up. And, and it, it is a beautiful house. And I would hate to see it go. Um, as far as some of the amenities, I know that, that, that it was mentioned that uh, there's going to be a lot of cars and we're not really a, uh, near any uh, of the train stations. One of, my, uh, one of my ideas for them as I speak to them uh, now and again is perhaps to have uh, shuttle buses that will take you to either uh, toward Katona for the train station there or uh, toward Croton for the train station there. And I got to tell you, what would be better than that? You could spend five, $600 a month in parking or you could spend you know, peanuts on a shuttle bus that will take these people back and forth that live there and they'll have this time to actually catch up and you know uh, collect their thoughts while they're heading to the train. So that I think is a, a critical component, you know, for something like this, and it makes it more uh, commuter friendly. So there's a lot of things that we could do here. We really don't know all the details. I know that uh, one of the big things for me is you're actually going to have public access, right, to the to the whole area. And they, they want to make a big walkway around the pond and preserve the pond. Um, and they want to make it so this way you could go there. There'll be a seating area. The, the, the main building is going to be open to the public. You can have public meetings there. Uh, so, I mean, there are a lot of pluses. I understand that there are some negatives as well. And some people aren't happy with some things. But, you know, that's where we all come together as a town. And, 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 and there's great people. And, you know, I love everybody in this town. And I speak very highly of all the citizens here. So I say we reserve our judgment. Um, sure. I think that your comments. I'm sorry. Just if you can conclude your comments, you're over your allotted time, I believe. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sergio. It was good to hear from Sergio Esposito. Diana, anybody else? Uh, I had somebody else, but I don't see them on quite yet. So Diana, Jay, can I get in for a quick? Sure. Go ahead. I'm listening to the comments. And I, a lot of the people have righteous questions about the site. I resent the implication by one of the speakers that people on the town board are giving this property special privileges. If that's the case, I would like the speaker to tell what her evidence is that there's special consideration being given to the owners of that property. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kofstein. We're, I'm, I'm sorry, Diana, you shifted on the board for me. I have to find you now. <laughs> yeah. I have one uh, phone number that I just let on. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, can you please identify hi. yourself? Yes. Hi. It's, it's Ilan Gilbert, uh, hey, former hi. supervisor. How are you? Hello. How are you? Okay. Welcome, everybody. I mean, uh, I'm, I shouldn't be welcoming you, but thank you for uh, <laughs> in, um, inviting us uh, on courtesy of the floor. I just wanted to to um, address this issue on the uh, sound view. I've been watching the meeting and um, I'm hesitant to uh, really chime in uh, yet until um, all information is gathered. But one of the things, uh, and Matt, I, I, I'm assuming you went to the, the training uh, up in, um, in Albany when you first became supervisor, if they didn't have the training online. Uh, but um, one of the things I learned in, uh, in the uh, training session when I uh, went up there was that the difference between the planning board and the uh, town board is that the planning board really is sort of con find to act simply within the law. If uh, they think if the project is within the law, 
they have to they have no discretion into allowing a project to go forward town board your elected officials you have some discretion obviously you have to work within the law but you have some discretion based upon all the factors and that's why you have public meetings uh public uh hearings to get input from all your constituents to determine uh, whether a project should go, but you feel it's in the best interest of the town. You have more discretion, let me put it that way, than a planning board does. And in that regard, that's why I would sort of hesitate in putting this in the overlay district, because I think this is a significant enough project that it should be uh, determined uh, by the uh, town board. Um, I'll just give you an example. You, I faced one issue uh, a couple of years ago that the, the police were facing with people right on Rochambeau parking their cars, waiting for the school buses in the morning and in the afternoon. And they were, they were gonna think, giving parents tickets for parking in an area where they made no parking. Uh, that, that whole intersection and that stretch of Underhill can be a nightmare at, uh, at um, uh, rush hour and in the morning. So I would uh, think that the town board really should be the, uh, uh, the, the, the body that should consider this project. And lastly, in terms of the, there has been something about the, that the applicant shouldn't be treated any differently than um, any other applicant. I agree with that. Um, I don't know the timing of the, uh, and I don't want to uh, say anything that there is anything nefarious, but there should not be a situation where a, a, a particular applicant, and I'm not saying it happened here, but I'm just saying there should not be a situation where a particular applicant got an advantage knowing that the zoning was going to be different than the existing zoning, and that's why they purchased uh, the property or got the property. That could be, I, I, I would say, equivalent to something like insider trading. I'm not saying that that happened here. I'm just saying that, that uh, if, if that's being raised, I don't think it's something that should be scoffed off either. So with that said, um, I think the town board is very capable of handling uh, this project and, 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 and determining what's best for the town. And I think that every factor should be considered. I, the, the need for uh, um, senior housing, the need for uh, a walkable Yorktown, all of it should be considered. But I think the town board should be the uh, the, uh, the the board that determines this, and that's my uh, two cents. Thank you, Walt. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Thanks. That's all I have. Okay, that concludes courtesy of floor. Is there a motion to close? Motion. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Lachterman, a second from Councilman Roker. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carry. Any comments from the board? Yeah, I, I, I'd like to start with one. Uh, you know, well, it, it's it's about sound. You just a couple things. <clears throat> you know, I've been sitting as the C, the uh, liaison for the senior advisory committee for I want to say the the last five years now, and um, I have nightmares about Rosemary and Jenny yelling at me on either side about the fact that we need our senior housing and we need, we need, uh, we need some different uh, areas of opportunity. I also, as, as someone whose daughter uh, is of that age where I'd love to see her be able to move back into Yorktown, understand that there's a need for some of that property, uh, some, of, some of the types of properties that are affordable in the apartment type of structure at market rate. Um, but really what I wanted to talk about, you know, you, you hear a lot of, you know, as, 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 as uh, Mr. Kopstein pointed out, nefarious talk. And, and I think it's important from, to say from my point of view, I know we were talking about this project of, of the overlay. And while that was on the board, we were looking to see if the town could purchase the Soundview property at one point and utilize the building and, and save it for, uh, for town use. So, you know, if it, and if it wasn't for COVID, that may have happened, I think. 
So there was, you know, there was talk about uh, the town looking at that purchase. While this was on the, while the overlay district was already being uh, looked at, reviewed, and people talking about. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it, it's just very, um, there's, a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, pardon me, crap being flung against the wall. And I just think it's very inappropriate. And I wanted to, I wanted to say that. I'm going to talk. Um, Ed, I'm, I'm, I was happy to hear you talked about the need for affordable apartments for young people. I never heard you say that before. So I've, I, I've said that a hundred times, Alice. Matter of fact, the okay, wine property, the property in particular. Okay. I was all in favor of that. You did say it about the um, wine, probably. Did I? I will take it back. But what I want to say is that. I don't know why the, this property was included in the um, overlay district, but I will find out why. Um, when we were working on the um, beginnings of the overlay district, I was told in total agreement because I thought we needed to um, let the community know what we were working on. And I remember asking the town planner if there were any applications before the board and he said no so you bet I'm going to talk to him I'm going to speak with him in the morning um, because I, I, I want to understand how this how this got there I would say that also as a reminder that the overlay districts this is not a new concept it was originally put into comprehensive plan mm -hmm. so let's keep that in mind in addition when we also uh started talking about the overlay districts was back in january uh, of last year because i had a meeting with the business council of westchester and their economic development director and i said explain to me some of the tools in the toolbox that other municipalities are utilizing and the first thing they said was planned development overlay districts. I said, great, perfect. Went to our planning department. They said, yeah, that sounds great. We've had that on our comprehensive plan for a number of years. We'd love to get it moving. That is the impetus of the legislation. That is where it came from. And quite frankly, we have not been shy about trying to pass it. We've, we've talked about it immensely for the last six, eight months at this point. Uh, and so I don't, I don't think it's a surprise. I don't think it should be a surprise. And, and I frankly agree with some of my colleagues that any accusations of nefarious wrongdoing is just unacceptable in my eyes. Because at the end of the day, everyone is going to go through a transparent process to make sure that it fits for the town, that it adheres to the law. And we were made we made sure that as part of the original law that was that was passed that tree laws included wetlands law included we're not letting anybody cut corners on the requirements that are already within town code so i just think everyone should understand that i understand that unfortunately our community has a long history of of turning away or reacting negatively to proposals and i understand that no one is looking to change the character integrity of our community that we all love, of the community that I was raised in, that I'm also raising my family, and no one's looking to change the integrity of this, of this great town. Uh, but I think that we need to go, as Rosemary said, on this journey together. And there's going to be things that we agree with and things that we disagree with. But the importance from our standpoint, I think from the board's standpoint, and I can say from my standpoint, is protecting the integrity of that process. So I think it's very important to remember that. Uh, and while I, I, I appreciate the comments from the public, I would also frankly ask for a certain level of respect mm -hmm. because some of those comments were borderline disrespectful. Uh, in fact, I'm being kind. I think they were actually disrespectful, especially comments yeah. accusing the board of, of taking nefarious action. And, and, and that also extends to our staff, our staff who work diligently on behalf of the town. And, and so I, uh, I would, again, caution our speakers during courtesy of the floor uh, when they make those comments. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Ed, for bringing that up because whether real or implied, 
there's nothing nefarious that we are bringing forward here. We are being more than transparent with this whole process. It is a process. There's going to be things that we're going to either say yay or nay to. And whether uh, the implement of them of of the speaker saying that there is something that is is underlying here is insulting some of which these folks have been have sat on this board and have listened and have had to go through this so i caution the folks on how they put things forward we have to have a public hearing anyway before All right forward on it so there will be more um information absolutely but you know uh, you know just just for your point tommy uh councilman diana if we want to be uh professional there sorry uh, no don't be professional okay so tommy if, if you know if there was something nefarious and like hey let's push something through why would the board give it to planning why, right. why, you know, it just, the, the comments don't make sense. And, and it's, it's kind of, it's kind of scary. You know, the board is removing itself a little bit to make sure that, that the processes through the different departments can be, you know, coordinated properly and, and the respect for the pro for the processes followed. And um, th there are no shortcuts that, that we could supersede when that happens. And, I, and, I, and if I can just add to that, Councilman Lockford, I think there was one speaker who was quite familiar with the process, made some comments about the, the planning board versus the town board, but also with the planning board, you're taking the politics out of their decisions. They are following the letter of the law. Yeah. And so not for nothing, it probably is for, for those who are so concerned about their baseless accusations, that's where you want these things to go. Because there, there's no politics involved. <clears throat> it's purely making sure that is within the, the confines of the law. And I would, I would remind uh, our, our guests of that as well, as well as, and I think we should maybe welcome and uh, our planning department back to, and maybe have our planning board back, who was here just last week discussing this law, praising it, praising it for what it would do for our, our community, not the project, not the project, the overlay district that we are trying to examine. But maybe we should have them back to educate people on the process that they go through. Because I think that there's been, unfortunately, a number of accusations over the years against our planning board when, as we all know, they are simply there to <clears throat> follow the law. Any other comments from the board? Can we move forward? Let, let, let me yeah. just say, may I say something? Sure, Councilman Patel. Okay, uh, you know, the key to survival is responsive to change. And all change is, is not gain, okay? And all movement is not forward. This is just the beginning and let's listen from the planning board and this new overlay Downwide, because this is, you know, is in a four different places, going to be a different kind of, uh, you know, uh, use of land. And let's see, you know, make sure that we heard to everybody, because the perception is that now the planning board is running in the town. That's another thing, you know. This is the perception, and that lets them, let's hear it as a board, you know, that how something would happen or let, let, let's have everybody's input, you know? Absolutely. And, and, you know, we can't, we can't be short-sighted. This, this, this town was shortchanged many, many years ago Yeah. when IBM was going to come into where the mall is now. Mm -hmm. And we were going to have a hotel in this area, yeah. which was going to be on the corner of route six and the Taconic state, state parkway on the eastbound side of it. So, uh, and, and, and Mr. Kopstein, thank you for, for uh, uh, pointing out the the um, innuendos of nefarious conduct, we appreciate we appreciate you, but we can't be short sighted. We have to look into everything. We have to see what's going on, and I think it's going in the right direction. There has to be a process, and we have to follow the process. 
you know, Tommy, I agree with you. Um, but I think the world is is at this intersection where everyone is questioning everything. And with all we see, can we blame them? Um, however, the process still has to go before into a public hearing. Right. With the town board. Right. No, we're not there yet. Right. Okay, can we we'll move on to public hearings? Yes. Yes, please. Let's go. We have a public hearing, we're convening a public hearing, speaking of public hearings, convening a public hearing on a proposed local law amending chapter 270, 275 vehicle and traffic by adding a new section 275-17F of the drag racing law. And I appreciate our town clerk showing uh, the advertisement. And I will ask their town attorney available. Adam, are you there? Yes. You want to just give them a, a high level briefing as a reminder of what this law entails? Sure. So, so we're, we're first doing the drag racing law, correct? Yes, correct. Sure. So, the first public hearing um, relates to what, what has been titled the Yorktown drag racing law. The the proposed local law would amend chapter 275 of the code, which is now uh, called uh, vehicles and traffic, uh, specifically section 17, which is entitled uh, speed of motor vehicles. It's going to add a new subsection 17 F, so subsection F, uh, which we call uh, entitled an unlawful speed contest, um, which effectively would uh, institute monetary penalties for someone engaging in a drag race. Um, unlawful fee speed contest, contest is defined, you know, I'm not going to read it, uh, but it sets the penalties to um, anywhere between $1,000 and $5,000 per violation, uh, which is much harsher than the fines and fees for other violations of, uh, you know, so the speeding laws under the code. Okay. Any discussion from the board before we open to the public? There being none, and we will open to the public for comment. And I'll turn it over to Diana Quas to let us know who we have. I only have Jay Kopstein. Okay, Mr. Kopstein. Hey, good back. evening again. Good evening. I think this law is consistent with section 1182 of the vehicle and traffic law. The difference being the fine that may be assessed mm -hmm. on a finding of guilty, a finding of guilt in a court of competent jurisdiction. Uh, I think there's absolutely no reason why this bill cannot be, or this piece of legislation cannot be enacted as written. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. I have one comment on the next one, though. Okay. The next Let's finish this one first, and then we'll go to the next one, OK? Thank you, sir. I, Thank you. Actually, Supervisor Slater, if I may, I know when the planning board was talking about it, uh, I'll bring up there were some concerns by uh, Mr. LaScala about the, um, just to make sure that the, the um, the law wasn't penalizing those who couldn't afford it. And it was made quite clear that this was specifically for drag racing and excessive speeds and in the safety. So I just wanted to make sure that that was brought up and addressed. Mr. Supervisor, I think 1182, which is modeled on, uh, had requirements and those requirements have been upheld through the New York State court system. So there is no issue on whether or not you can have a finding of guilt provided right. the specific item about required of conviction for drag racing or myth. Madam, we all agreed that this law was, in, our intent was to save lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Yep. 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 May I say something about that? Sure, we have, we're gonna recognize Rosemary Panio for the record. Okay, you know, I live in a very quiet area of Yorktown and drag racing has also been a, an issue up here. 
Yes. I mean, it's, it's pretty frightening to be in your garden or to be still, or to go to bed early or to have young children out playing in their yards, which we're all accustomed to doing because we're all very cognizant of the fact that, that we've all raised our children here. And now we have a lot of new couples who are raising young children here. And to see drag racing on Morning View Drive and Heights Drive and Westview Drive is a pretty scary thing. So I am very happy to hear about this legislation. And if you don't want to pay the fine, don't do the crime. This, this, this whole thing falls into unauthorized speed contests as mm -hmm. Mr. Kopstein has uh, brought forward mm -hmm. on 1182, um, where this just expands upon it a little bit. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, increases the fines to hopefully put a damper on it. It is once again just another tool in the toolbox yeah. for our police department to curb this type of activity on the streets and put it on the tracks with the ones. Good. Are there any other public comments? Any other comments from the public, Diana? No, I have nothing else. Okay. Motion to close public hearing. We have a motion from Councilman Lachterman. We have a second. So, so moved. From Councilman Diana, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, would the board be amenable to closing the public hearing on this particular item? Yes. When are you adopting it? We already closed. We already closed. Yeah. I'm sorry. Jeez. Uh, adopting the pub. Adopting. Adopting. Adopt, uh, adopting the yes. law amending Chapter 275, Vehicle and Traffic, by adding a new Section 275-17F. Yes. Drag racing law. No moved. We have a second. motion by Councilman Lachman, second by Councilman Diana. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously and is adopted. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And thank you to everyone. And I want to thank James Nolan for bringing this to our yeah. attention. This is very nice. This is yeah, he did a good job. Yes, he did. Let's do um, the second part of the law now. We have a, uh, a public hearing, and we're, I'm sure our clerk will raise the advertisement. Proposed local law amending Chapter 275, Vehicle and Traffic, by adding a, a Part 4, Forfeiture of Vehicles in Connection with Drag Racing Law. And we will go back to our town attorney, Adam Rodriguez, to just provide a quick high-level briefing on what this will accomplish. Sure. Um... So we add a new part four also to the chapter 275. Um, part four would have sections 41 through 51, uh, but effectively the law provides for the forfeiture of vehicles that are used in drag races uh, or unlawful speed contests, which is you know the, the technical term that we use. Um, so in, in the event that you know. Uh, a drag race occurs, the, the town board, and, and you know, someone is arrested and, and then um, convicted or pleads guilty of uh, an offense arising out of the drag racing incident. The town board uh, would have the authority to authorize the town attorney to init initiate an action for forfeiture in the Supreme Court. Uh, it provides for all sorts of notice mechanisms um, and also provides for an innocent owner and hardship defense. So, you know, in, in extreme cases, you know, there can be some leniency, um, you know, if, if, for example, someone lives in the middle of an area where there's no public transportation and this is their only mode of you know, transportation and, and it would be an economic hardship, they would lose their job. So, you know, the, the, those sorts of factors and facts can be considered in determining whether uh, relief could be given to that individual in, in appropriate circumstances. Okay. Any commentary or discussion from the board? Well, this was also broached by uh, Mr. Loscala, and we uh, made sure that he was aware that, uh, you know, once again, it's a tool in the toolbox and, you know, a uh, worst case scenario, so to speak. Sure. Yeah, once again, this is a worst case scenario. You can always impound somebody's car and even hold it for evidence if you need to, uh, uh, bef pending trial for such in incidents. I mean, you could take somebody's car for a bald tire and hold it, hold it as evidence if necessary. I don't think I've ever seen that done. Mr. Copsine, have you ever seen that done? Uh, no comment. 
<laughs> okay. Anyway. Move in the toolbox. <laughs> that's right. But anyway, um, um, you know, like we said, it's 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 on that extreme level where it's. It, it, it could be that there was a death involved during the drag racing. It could be yeah. that personal injury and or property, a lot of property damage was done. But it's not that if you get stopped for drag racing that they're going to impound your car. There's, there's exit circumstances which causes that mechanism to engage and then they would go into that effect. That's all I have to say. Okay. We have uh, I, I have a comment. Yesterday, one of the scout for his community in a citizenship, he asked me about the drag race and uh, explained whatever was discussed here at the town board meeting. And I agree that it's good to have this kind of law. And the problem is, you know, most of the people involved, uh, the, as far as I, I know, I know about it, is that some people not from our community, but outside uh, our community, they come and do this thing in the middle of the night like that. So there is a disturbance in the noise and all that. And uh, if they are not careful, you know, accident occurs and there was some accidents in under Hill Avenue, two deaths, you know. So this is really, and many people have complained in even on my street, you know, people go with a motorcycle, you know. So this is just not only the car, you know. They go with a, the little motorcycle, scooter, and then stand up with the one wheel over there, down going up a hill. So this is a good thing to have, and that was the explanation I given to the to the scout, you know, and he's going to be really happy to get his eagle ceremony on this uh, project, uh, you know, when he, he, he presented to the community. You know, this... This whole uh, speed contest thing comes from the the advent of the movies like The Fast and the Furious and so on and so forth, where they're actual speed contests. They're, they're... Fortunately, we don't have a lot of it in this town, but there are roads in this town that um, yield themselves to that type of behavior. Um, there happened to be one up on 84 where they actually stopped traffic on 84 and had um, a drag race. And by the time the cops got there, they're gone. Right. But meanwhile, they had already stopped traffic, tractor trailers, the whole nine yards, dangerous situation, had their little drag race, and they were off at the next exit and could be home or wherever they went at that point in time. But, um, and, and we have that type of situation, whether it be Route 6 or, or 100 down by the reservoir, you know, the nice straight areas. Um, so... But it's fortunate we don't have a lot of that that goes on here. And it does come from other communities. You have rival groups that want to race their cars. So they'll come from, oh, who knows, let's say Peekskill or, or, or from Putnam Valley or Katona. Or, and they meet the group from Yorktown. And, it, you know, it, it could develop. Having this law in place will hopefully curtail that so it doesn't happen in our community. I think, um, Tommy, I think the chief told explain that they often meet down at the um, BJ Shopping Center. Um, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Because Route 202 in the middle of the night is, is barren and it's straight. Yep. Okay. Diana, do we have any public comment? I believe we have Jake Hopstein, I know, who wanted to say a few words. He's the only one I know of. Okay. Right. Good evening again. And in the interest of transparency, <laughs> I ran several drag racing programs in New York City. Yeah. And I didn't do the drag racing. I ran the enforcement programs. Oh, enforcement. We pushed a lot of it out of the Bronx. Unfortunately, it moved up into lower Westchester. They used to shut the Deegan and the Sprain and the Hutch to do their drag racing. There are different ways of curtailing it. But in particular on this law, I'm focusing on 27544 sub A. And this is based on what I took down from the town website. Mm -hmm. And if you read it along with me, you will see only section 1182 of the BTL is mentioned. So if you have a conviction under the new section 27, uh, two, uh, 275.17F, 
you could not do a forfeiture because this paragraph did not cite it. It only cites a conviction under section 1182 of the vehicle and traffic law. That would have to be amended to include the new section 17-F. Dear 17F. Well, I, I, well, I, I can comment. Yes, please. I'm going to ask you to. I disagree with that interpretation because what it says is um, if you're convicted, if you're convicted or plead guilty to any offense arising out of such arrest or summons. So if you were, if you were to plead guilty um, or be convicted. Of the other um, 17F, you know that that in, in my my reading of this will authorize the forfeiture. All right, I, don't think, I I think my personal opinion is 17F should be cited as well. Let there be no doubt. I don't think there's any harm in adding it. I mean, if it provides clarity. And it's not a substantial change, which I don't think it is. It's just referencing that part of the law to make sure that it's clear. Correct, Mr. Rodriguez? Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, that, 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 that'll work. That's just include it now we're, we're covered. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we, if we take a look at the last sentence, the last two lines, it says, Exhibition of speed on a highway if prohibited by 11, section 1182 of the vehicle traffic law. I think we have to include 17F if we're going to use it to make it viable and not have to spend a ton of money in the court system going from the Supreme Court to the Appellate Division to the Court of Appeals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kopstein. Any other comments from the public, Diana? No, I don't have anybody else. Okay, then we'll make a motion to close. Motion to close public hearing. We have a motion from Councilman Diana, second from Councilwoman Roper. All in favor, aye. Aye. And with the, uh, the, the one amendment uh, that uh, Mr. Kopstein raised, which specifically cites, I believe it was 17F, is the town board amenable to, to passing this into law? Yes. So moved. Yeah, you'll have to amend the law to include that those two words, but it's not appreciable, so we can. Right. It's not a substantial change. No. Right. But we have to. That's amend. why I said with with the addition of of right. that one amendment. Yeah. Yes. So moved. So we have a motion from Councilman. Second. A motion. A motion. A second from Councilman Lachterman. So all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries and the law is adopted. Thank you to everyone for participating. Thank you, Mr. Kopstein, for your insight. Greatly appreciated. Thank you uh, to Adam Rodriguez as well for working on this for us. You're very welcome, Mr. Supervisor. You know what's so exciting about having uh, board meetings? You get our residents to come in and give us their experience. Mm -hmm. I think it's terrific. Absolutely. So we now will move on to resolutions. Mm -hmm. uh, we can take them together. Yep. We have a resolution that will create a local waterfront revitalization committee. We have a resolution appointing Thomas Travis as a consultant in the town clerk's office. We have a resolution to approve the garbage license of Oak Ridge Hill, excuse me, Oak Ridge Hauling LLC to service commercial properties in the town of Yorktown for the year 2021. We have an amendment to the transitional rezoning. I'm going to stop there. Actually, let's take let's take those that I just read: the local waterfront revitalization committee, the Thomas Travis, and the uh, garbage license. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Sorry, we have a motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, and that was a motion made by Councilman Diana, second by Councilman Lachterman. There's a, a there's a resolution to amend the transitional rezoning of George Roberta of the George Roberta property located at 1600 Front Street. 
This is amending the resolution number 486 of 2017. I do want to state for the record that we did hear from Mr. Hoyt, a neighbor. Yes, we did. And is John Tegeter on, our director of planning? Yes, I am. Good evening, John. Thank you. Uh, I, I shared with uh, the board, and I believe I shared with you, Mr. Hoyt's correspondence. Would you be able to just answer uh, or provide some insight uh, uh, as to the questions that were raised? And I can be more specific if you'd like me to. I just have to find a piece of paper that- no, he, he thinks that um, oh, here it is. The, the new resol the new company will have a, a, a greater um, impact yeah. than the previous. Right, so I'm looking, yeah, I did see his email. Thank you. And he's apparently worried that it will be some type of light Mac manufacturing that is has more of an intense use than what was anticipated. Is that everyone else is yeah. reading? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Allow yeah. this range of light manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And by an unnamed R and D company, but uh, right. I think it's so um, what you can do here is, and I and I think that this, my understanding of this R and D is going to be. Um, as stated in the resolution, uh, like uh, communications type R and D, is that correct? Right. Renewable. It's it's uh, uh, renewable energy. Excuse me. Yes. Renewable energy. Yes. Right. So, and I think we've been um, under the impression that that is uh, does not have. And I just want to read a section here in the section that is governing uh, this area, which is the I two light industrial district. And it allows light industrial or manufacturing uses, um, including fabrication, processing, converting, altering, assembly, et cetera, et cetera, which does not normally cause or result in any dissemination of dust, smoke, observable gas or fumes, odor, noise, vibration, or excessive light beyond the immediate site of the building in which the use is conducted, nor menace by reason of fire, explosion, or other physical hazard, nor harmful discharge of waste material or unusual traffic hazard or congestion. I think that you've been made aware that this type of use does not do that, but you can certainly add in that very language that this use cannot exceed any of the limitations of, the, of what I just read. And that if it does, it needs to come back to your board and it, essentially not allowed. So uh, I think that would um, speak to his concerns if you understand where, where I'm going with that. What's the section you quoted, John? It is 300-21, paragraph 17, hmm. 3A. <laughs> uh, I have a question for you, John. Yes. Uh, yes. Upstairs, there are two apartments in the second portion in the Southern. If, the, if there are uh, tenant, and if there is an issue, you know, noise, health, chemical, whatever, vibrations, then how that will be a concern to the neighbor will be addressed, you know? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is that this type of use, as, we, as, we, as, we, as we've been told, does not exhibit those types of impacts. And that I believe that you can add this into the re resolution that it cannot exceed those explicitly. So therefore, any as this R and D operation continues, it will be prohibited from producing any of those um, uh, adverse impacts, right? So it has it has to be a clean operation, as is already. It is restricted under that zone, the Thank underlying you. zone, I should say. So can we then, <laughs> can we add then a uh, as a second whereas, right? Stating, uh, any use that exceeds those listed in section 300-21 paragraph 17 section 3a must be approved by a town board resolution yes are we comfortable with that yeah yes okay there was another or, issue you know you can uh, prohibit it that, actually you want to pro so we want to do we want to require town board resolution or do you want to <laughs> outright that it's prohibited well it would be prohibited remember this is a transitional zone so if for instance let's say they were needed to do some activity uh, in two years because that's the way this uh, operation is moving and evolving. They would, it would be prohibited. And since it's a transitional zone, they could come to you and say, our 
operation has changed. We'd like to tell you what we're doing now and what we need to do. And here's all of the parameters and impacts. And you can consider that to amend the zoning just as you are now. Okay. Or you can say, no, I'm sorry. It's gonna hurt the neighbors and, and so. And John, may I say something? There was a one time issue a few years ago, the height of the building. Is, is it conformal? uh to the current uh, you know yes. requirement yes it does okay thank you yeah. It, yeah i think the height came up vishnu because the land behind it rises up quickly so yes. as you're yeah so john isn't that, that the happened. same isn't that the same plans as uh george roberta had brought in at one point in time yeah. where it, no, the, it's the exact same ones okay exactly yeah that, ones. that's what i thought okay and if you remember there's two buildings yeah yep. southern building uh, has the apartments in it, and it has offices or retail below. That will that will be used in that manner. Mm -hmm. The northern building is the smaller building, and they want to use that building for this operation. Right. So then, the, the only question to the board, I think, though, is: Do we want to prohibit or or, or allow with the town board approval? Well, because it's transitional, um, it could be up to the town board. Um, we don't know what's going to happen in three years, four years, five years. Right. For sake, I, I like your first resolution where he's got to come back to the board. I'm fine right. with that as well. Should their, should their process of whatever change, they must come back to the town board. Well, no, if they exceed anything that's listed in that section right. that John- Correct, correct. Known, yeah, uh, and just-, right, just Russia, we, Right, John? Just, that's correct, and it, it could have it explicit, so it, that's always better way to do it. Yeah. But so remember that as a transitional zone, that isn't essentially the way that it functions. Right. That whatever you lay down on the site plan and within the resolution are the limitations. Anything beyond that is prohibited. Right. Right. Thank you. Okay. So then we will we will uh, amend the resolution and, and Diane, I have it written down so that I can I can send it to you. I'll email it to you directly. But um, so we'll add. Uh, before, the, we'll, we'll add a new paragraph uh, above the beat, therefore resolved, and it'll state that whereas any use that exceeds those listed in section 300-21 paragraph 17, section 3A must be approved by town board resolution. Right. Okay, with that being said, I'll entertain a motion from the board. So I'll move. We have a, a motion from Councilman Diana. Do we have a second? Second. <laughs> Second from Councilwoman Roker. All in favor? Aye. Yeah, it's motion carries. Mr. Hoy is a nice fellow up on the hill, and, and he's kind of the advocate for the folks up there, to, to, to my knowledge. Ed, I think, probably knows him better than I do, but uh, he, he's a nice guy, and he just uh, tries to help everybody out along that sure. um, along those streets up there. And, and, and I'm sensitive to their to their their plight up there. They don't want to have something down below them that's going to uh, – you know, uh, hamper their their way of life and, and, and quality of life that they have learned to enjoy. Of course. So, and we're happy to accommodate them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and so that's that's a perfect perfect for, statement. Yeah. Perfect happy statement we put in. Okay, we'll go on to uh, we have uh, one more on the agenda, then a second that's come out of closed. We have to a uh, resolution to approve the purchase of one Ford F three fifty for the refuse and recycling department. Motion. Motion second. From Roker. Second from Councilman Lachterman. Aye. 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 Motion carries. And then lastly, we have a resolution from the Comptroller that came out of closed session. The Comptroller's the resolution states, the Comptroller is hereby authorized to restore 96 hours of, two, of 2018 vacation time to Michael Echeverria's benefit bank. This time should have been charged to workers' compensation in 2018. Motion. A motion from Councilman Roker. Second. Second. From Councilman Lachterman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And that, I'm just making sure that there's no other business before the board. I've tried to cut out early before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's. You right. got two kids are waiting at home, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, with no other business before the board. Well, Night, everyone. Can a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have Second. a motion by Councilman Lackerman, second by Councilman Diana. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Thank you, Yorktown. Have a great night. Good night, Good night Yorktown. Mask, wash your hands. Yeah, wear your mask, wash your hands. Thank you. <laughs>